Hello? Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast? What up, Doc? Uh, you want us to help with Team C's? You, if you knew what you were doing, you could do that, 100%. Donate $1 for uh, every subscriber we get up to 200 subscribers? Until the end of the year? Until the end of the year. <laughs> Mr. Beast, we're at 35 subscribers. You think you can make it happen? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do that, Mr. Beast. Love you. Nice good game, Vin, by the way. <laughs> Alright, bye. So, you heard it here first, boys. We're donating uh, $1 up to... Up to 200 yeah, subs until yeah. the end of the year. So. And so we're at 35, so 165 bucks to Team C's. Please get us 200 subscribers. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. And welcome back to Boom Shot. I'm Kale. This is Colby in a different venue. <laughs> quite uh, different. Yeah, quite different venue. Uh, the, the, our studio is under construction. So. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, but anyway, we're back today to talk about the new Hawkeye episode, which actually was a banger. I loved it, dude. Um, Probably my favorite of the series so far. Oh, yeah. And it'll only get better from here. As we see more Kingpin-related references. More Uncle? Mr. Beast. Uh, anyway, so thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the video. Boom. You looking for this? <laughs> All right. So what do you like about this episode? Uh, one of the main things I like was the whole dynamic or the whole aspect of... Uh... How he's how he's struggling with his hearing loss. Oh yeah, I know. It, it, it adds such like a human element to Hawkeye, like it, the fact that, like we said in our last video, that he is one of the only humans remaining on like main humans yeah. on the Avengers team, and so he he actually does deal with the physical consequences of trauma, like he's seen throughout his years. Dude, dude's been through a lot. And and not gonna lie, that that scene with him and his son where he can't like hear what he's saying, dude. Uh, that was sad. That's a tearjerker. Dude. I know, and and then and then Kate's having to write down what he, what the little kid's saying or whatever, and she's like all all the while thinking, Dad, I'm I'm making a miss Christmas with his family. Yeah, and then and then his son was like, because remember he first started talking, he was like, Yeah, honey, I can't talk right now, like because he didn't know it wasn't his wife. <clears throat> yeah, and it was his son talking to him the whole time. Yeah, oh, it, so it was it was a tragic scene for real, but it was uh, I just like I like what they're doing with Hawkeye. They're they're really giving him some depth, depth like they did in, uh, I hope not death, but they're giving him depth <laughs> I hope not. like they did in Avengers 2, like by establishing his family. They're building on top of it now. And I honestly kind of like the dynamic between Kate and uh, Hawkeye's kind of. I do too. They're, they're, they're growing a pretty tight bond, I feel like. Yeah, they get along pretty well. I, and especially like in regards to the comics as Hawkeye being this like mentor figure to to Kate, you know? Yeah. And even after he claims that he's not a mentor to anybody in the show, which also was another sad moment. You know, Clint thinking about everything he's done and in the past as Ronan. Uh, he's yeah. like, I'm a mentor to no one. And Kate's like, are you kidding me? But Yeah, because she definitely looks up to him ever <clears> since uh, that time in New York. Yeah. So, And I'm and, sure there's plenty of other people like that, too. Yeah, so basically, oh, yeah, the, the, basically the episode opens up. They're stuck in that warehouse they were in or whatever, and they're just, like, messing around. Then we have the sick fight scene, dude. With Hawkeye, he gets his bow back. I mean, after he gets beat up by Echo, but... Well, yeah, and then also, I'll, I'll make a note of this episode opens up with Echo as a kid, right? Oh, yeah, that, no, that was, yeah, I forgot about that. And uh, there's a little girl, and we see she has a phenomenal, uh, like, of what's going on, like, yeah. in the class and stuff. The teacher came over there and was trying to, like, interpret to her, and she'd already written all the answers down. yeah. So she's very aware. That's what I, I was trying to say. She's very aware. I, I think in the I think in the comic she has like photo uh, receptics or like photographic memory skills, kind of like a uh, taskmaster does. Yeah. So I think that's kind of her like power suite or something like that. But <clears throat> yeah, she's deaf, but she has like yeah, like you said, like this unnatural kind of sense of what's going on around her. She can like feel like intense like vibrations yeah. and stuff like that. And I also didn't know she had the. Uh... It was missing her leg or part of her leg. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that either, dude. I was so, I was so confused by that, which they didn't really show her in, in the whole frame of the second episode. But, mm -hmm. yeah, and so it opens up with that. You know, Hawkeye and her have a bout, you know. She doesn't know that he's rolling in and that he literally slayed everybody in that restaurant. Including her dad. Yeah, I hope, dude, that scene was brutal, dude. That was, man. I mean, they, they obviously didn't show any of it, but he's just, like, slicing, dicing heads off, you know. And uh, I don't think anybody died in that whole... Uh, Chase scene, did they? The car chase scene? I don't think so. I That's think because they, they're trying to hold off from killing anybody, I feel like. And even when Hawkeye was shooting him in the warehouse, he's shooting him in like shoulder and yeah. head and stuff like that. Dude, so. speaking of that scene, the scene was amazing, dude. Dude, dude does, it, does it give you vibes from your favorite scene in DC history? Uh, favorite might be my favorite fight scene in history of all time. <laughs> Batman went ham. Uh, it's, it's, 
You know, they're different characters, you know? But Way different. Dude, the way he was using his bow, like, you mentioned this before we mm-hmm. even started shooting. He jumps off the banister or whatever, That's and, like, sick, dude. he pauses in midair. And then the Shows the it. shot at the end or whatever where, like, he's he's finally done, and the guy's running at him, and he just, like, pulls back his arrow oh, yeah, and shoots way. and, like, pins the guy's uh, hand to the wall. I was like, oh, my gosh. I that, love that, dude, the montage where he's just going ham shooting people. Oh, yeah, dude. And... Dude, can we just talk about his arrows? Like, his all the kind of arrows he's That's got? That's one in? thing that, that is kind of similar to Batman. I was just thinking about, dude, all the different arrows he has is kind of He's got, like, that goop arrow, and then he's yeah. got, like, the plunger arrow. Dude, and, that was kind of savage. Yeah, I know. She's like, go go distract him or take care of him while uh, I get this other arrow, whatever he's doing. Yeah. And she's like, don't, this is the most dangerous one of all. Yeah. She shoots it and it's like, plunges <laughs> off the guy. And then they they got the grapple arrow, which obviously saved them. And then, the dude, the explosive arrow? Thanks kind of overpowered, dude. Oh, dude, dude, the Pimtech arrow? Dude, yes, dude, the Pimtech arrow. That was sick. That was dope. You learned a lesson from Civil War, dude. And man, yeah. You might be the next Iron Man. There was one more arrow. Oh, yeah, the arrow that they shot so that when they're driving through the Christmas tree farm or whatever. Oh, yeah. And they fire that arrow and it just, like, grapples onto everything. That's, that, I thought that was a sick arrow for real. Yeah, that's probably just the tip of the surface, dude. Tip oh, of the yeah. iceberg for his arrows, man. Oh, I know, dude. I'm, but, I'm excited to see what they have. I'm wondering. I, it was also, I feel like we saw a lot of Hawkeye that we never saw before. Is it focused on him? Yeah. Like the close-up shots of him shooting. I feel like we never got something like that. And then I, a question I always have is, like, how does this man never run out of arrows? This episode, we kind of saw that. He had to run back for one. Yeah. He ran out. Dude, that's a good point. Like, I mean, we saw it. We kind of saw it a little bit in Avengers. Like that same scene that Kate watched yeah. him jump off. Like he had to take an arrow from the Chitari's head and put it yeah. back in his thing and re-equip it or whatever. But still, like that just adds another like true, limitation yeah. element to his powers. Like, you know, sure, he's a sharpshooter. But what happens when the sharpshooter runs out of arrows? So <clears throat> it's interesting. I feel like we'll just keep getting more of that, dude. And I love it. Yeah, I know. He's slowly becoming one of my favorites. You know, as one of the last OGs left, he's slowly becoming one of my favorites, dude. Yeah, me too, man. It hurts. It hurts to say, but especially after he was already becoming one of my favorites well, after Age of Ultron. Oh yeah, and especially the way they the way they built his character, which I'm worried that they might like just. I wonder if he's done after this show, which I hope not. But I feel like he he could be. Yeah, Jeremy Renner's kind of getting on up there, but. <laughs> he's still doing a good job but I think he had some funny lines in this I feel like yeah, he's, still, remember. he's not putting in the work in the hours like The Rock is you know <laughs> but uh, dude what if they brought Rock into the MCU no, they probably will at some point <laughs> that would be hilarious so they, I could see him being like Thing I don't know why I just thought about that but... <laughs> that'd be crazy well, because his name is The Rock anyway <laughs> But uh, the last thing, I mean, one of the last things I want to talk about is obviously the ending. You know, they're in the penthouse or whatever, searching up for who are they? Who are they trying to find? I can't even remember who they were trying to find. Yeah, well, they're just trying to find some. Uh, I think out about Jack and then homie, uh, the dude. I guess like the right hand man of Echo. I forget his name. Oh yeah, that's the dude they were searching up first. Yeah, and they found out he worked at that place, and then they looked at Jack, and then. I guess Hawkeye heard something. Yeah, he, he did. He, like, footsteps something. He walked back. And then the episode ends with uh, Jack, a.k.a. Geraldo Riviera, or whatever that guy's <laughs> name is, uh, sticking the Ronin sword out at his throat, which, obviously, we know Hawkeye could literally bury this dude, but... <laughs> Let me tell you, bro. This this show has a, has a nag for ending on cliffhanger. Dude, bro. no joke. All three episodes are just like cliffhanger, cliffhanger, I was like, cliffhanger. And when this ended, bro, I was like, no. I do. I thought, okay, yeah, because I was looking at the episode timer and I was thinking, I was like, oh, yeah, are they gonna show like, are they gonna show what's gonna happen? And then of course it just cuts to to black and then the credits roll. And I'm like, bro. And I was hoping there's a post credit scene, but yeah. <clears throat> so I'm wondering if they might try to frame Jack. As the, the as the Ronin, because he's got the Ronin blade, so maybe like they could somehow like get a you know, like escape and he would run out there with the Ronin blade. Which I, I don't know if that's what they're gonna try and aim for because he was gonna he was trying to clear her name like Kate's name. I feel like I just thought about this. I feel like a part of this is gonna be. It reminds me of Winter Soldier. What happened with Bucky? Oh, it's like yeah. a dip because you got Hawkeye and Ronin and then Bucky and Winter Soldier. And then we saw in Falcon and Winter Soldier, like, the whole thing of him trying to get past what, what Hydra did to him. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. I feel like we might get that in this show where Hawkeye's trying to trying to bury Ronan and put it in the past. That's a, Yeah, that's a good, like, thought. Which he, he actually says in in the thing that Black Widow killed Ronan. Yeah, which is true. I yeah. thought about that. I was like... Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, she, yeah, because whenever she showed up, he basically just, you know, quit and yeah. came back to reality, but... 
I mean, you have to feel for the man. The man lost literally everybody in his family. Like, what are the chances of that in the blip? But Very very low, dude. Yeah, yeah that's got to be very low, but... Yeah, that's brutal. But I mean, after all, Thanos was only trying to help. <laughs> As we learned in the Eternals, you know? Thanos was doing his due diligence. And that was about the only good thing to come from that movie. But, uh... I don't know. You have anything else? Okay, I got a question for you. Okay. Do you think... Okay. We hadn't even talked about this. Okay. The uncle. Oh, the uncle. Um, Kingpin, dude. <laughs> is, there, is there any doubt that it's Kingpin at this point? That's probably the biggest thing in the episode, but there's so many other things I loved about it. I just... I, not that I forgot about the Kingpin part, but... We yeah. I mean, I kind of... To me, yeah. I think they're all trying to link it. Like, it, to me, it just seems linked back to Jack somehow. Like, they're trying really hard to link it back to Jack. I don't know. Like, the uncle... I, I thought about, like, Armand, like, how Armand was Jack's uncle, and maybe that guy's, like, Jack is the uncle of that guy or whatever, but I don't know if they're related. Yeah, so, so Kingpin's got to be Echo's boss. Yeah. And no, no telling how many other people's boss, but I, here's my question. Do you think, what, what are the odds you think that's all we see of Kingpin, just his arm? Hmm. In the show, do you think he'll come back? And we'll... I actually see his... They, they've, they've, there's been some leaks and rumors out there that Kingpin... They showed some footage of Kingpin. It's the same actor from Daredevil, but beefed up a little bit, you know, because Marvel likes fat people, I guess. Thor. But anyway, uh, he's a little bit beefed up. So I honestly think he could be... This would be the show to introduce him in, kind of like they did with Loki. Like They're kind of just laying out their villains one by one in shows to like build them up in movies, it seems like. Yeah. So, because what's our next movie out? No Way Home? And honestly, like, those villains are just totally unrelated to the majority of the MCU. Yeah, they're, and then they may, yeah, they may never come back for another movie. Yeah, exactly. from a different universe. Exactly. So that's why, yeah, that's why I'm kind of saying, like, it's, No Way Home has nothing to do with, like, the Like, it, I, obviously it's in the MCU, but it's not really, like, an MCU scope movie. It's, it, they're just trying to, this is a Spider-Verse movie, really. Yeah, because we were talking about Kingpin being the sixth of the Sinister Six. And if that were the case, that would be epic. That would be epic, but I'm trying to figure out why he would have beef with Spider-Man. Yeah, see, I don't... Like, it, how would he get into In the, the comics, universe? like, Spider-Man is a, like, low-tier in heights. Like, he works on the streets, and he also works, like, in the greater New York, like, protecting the world, and New York is essentially... I just feel but, like we don't have much time until Spider-Man, so how would they get Kingpin to have conflict with Spider-Man, or with... Uh, Tom or not Tom? Tom Holland. There would have to be some kind of flashback in Hawkeye if if that. But that, I feel like that would kind of take away from the plot. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. Maybe maybe Peter got into like something conflict with one of his the people he's over. Yeah. Kingpin, and that's why he's like, you trying to stop me or something? Who knows, dude? Maybe dude. Maybe uh, Mysterio worked with Kingpin a little bit. Who knows? Kingpin's yeah, got the does. money. Yeah, he does. I, he's a really intriguing character to me. I know he is. Like uh, seeing him in Spider Verse, like into the Spider Verse, was interesting. Having him be the main <laughs> villain, he cracked me up in that movie, dude. He's like he had like the broadest shoulders. Like his legs were like this, this <laughs> close together, and it's just like his head was like not even on the top of his body. Like, yeah, it was just like like, <laughs> it was like protruding cause... outward. <laughs> it, I hope they bring. I think they will. They, I mean, to me, there's so many characters that they haven't brought in yet that are just waiting to be brought in. And if they bring in Kingpin, we might be looking at uh, uh, Daredevil. And Daredevil yeah. is closely related with She-Hulk, so, you know. That would be crazy. That'd be a good tie-in. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he just rules a lot of, uh, like, he's over a bunch of, like, like the ja uh, Jumpsuit Mafia. Yeah. I feel like he's over a bunch of groups like them in the streets and stuff. There's no telling what he's got his hand in. I mean, they, I feel like they should make, like, a, a series or whatever where he's... Like, because there's so many, like, criminal underworlds anyway. Like, he yeah. takes over the power broker. He takes over uh, Shang-Chi's sister and takes over all. Like, he has, like, this global power ring of, like, just this criminal underworld. That would be sick to watch. Yeah. I want it to be hard to get to him. Yeah. Because he's got so many people that, you know. He's, and then, when obviously, when we finally get to him, I want it to be, like, rewarding to, like, yeah. see. I don't know. about oh, who That would be crazy if we never even hardly saw his face. Yeah. Until, like, our, our heroes saw him. Dude. What if, uh, yeah, they don't know, they don't even know who's at the top. Who would you want to track him down, though? Like, who would you want to be the person to fight Kingpin? I don't know. I feel like they got to keep it kind of 
I think it'd be cool, really rewarding if it was still kind of grounded. Yeah. Like someone like Hawkeye. Because Doctor Strange could, he, I mean, he probably Doctor could Strange. just find out who he is. Yeah. And just be like, yoink. So and, I, P- and Peter's super powered, so, and he's got, you know, obviously more advanced technology. I think it would be cool if we got someone like Hawkeye. He's, he's with the Jumpsuit Mafia. Yeah. He finds Echo, their leader. He gets to Echo, finds out her leader, and then keeps going up, stuff like that. Finds mm-hmm. different people and then finally gets to the tracks him down to uh what used to be avengers tower and it's just wolves and fist sitting at his desk like this or whatever that's how the show is or something like that they couldn't remember when they were trying to get that watch yeah that could have been they could have been trying to get that for kingpin he's trying to get like avengers old avenger stuff and hawkeye mentioned that in the episode yeah that that wasn't that's a good point he did mention he's like why are why are people wanting stuff from the compound like i hope they don't Take any more stuff or something. Yeah, like I mean, who knows what they'd find? They'd find some Iron Man tech in there, probably. So, no. I don't know. And Kingpin could definitely do put Kingpin in a Hulkbuster armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man's already Hulkbuster himself, but put him in an armor, it'd be insane. I mean, that's pretty much all I got. You got anything else? Um, so you still thinking we'll see Yelena Belova in the series? I, feel like I think the mention to. of Black Widow today really... I mean, I know that's kind of been like a big theme throughout the series was Widow, but like specifically mentioning her and about how she killed Ronan in a way. I liked how I liked how they threw that line in there. I, yeah. I think that was good about but the where, writers. But where did she kill Ronan, though? Did she kill Ronan uh, at Vormir, or did she kill Ronan in Shang-Chi? Or in Shang-Chi, Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> in Shanghai, you know? I know what you mean. Yeah, I think Shanghai... I don't know. I think she might have killed him in Vormir by like, you know, throwing, like sacrificing her life. Like, I don't know. To me, yeah, like, yeah. that may have just broke him. Yeah, that broke me, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it was sad. But I don't know. I feel like, yeah, maybe there. Maybe he, he kind of gave it up. But like, if if they wouldn't have been able to succeed on the mission, yeah, they would have gone back to it, maybe. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I see what you're saying, but I feel like Shang Chi, maybe. <laughs> Shanghai. It probably was in Shanghai. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. I know what you're saying. It could have been either or, or both, really. Yeah. That's, yeah. It could, I mean, it could be a mixture of both, but, for sure. Yeah. Uh, New Rockstar is a big inspiration of ours. I saw them saying uh, Elena Belova could come in kind of like an Ahsoka figure, like she did in Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. Dip in for one episode and help out. Or actually, like, she might come in, try and kill Hawkeye, and be like, oh, you're actually the good guys here. Help for one episode and then dip out. Dude, if she helps, that'd be sick, dude. Might be overpowered, dude. It'd be cool if she was in there for like like the final two, but yeah, I could see her coming in for one episode and then and then that'd be like a team up episode. She goes back and the tension's back on Hawkeye and Kate. Yeah, I like that idea too. That would be a sick. That would be a sick like three team up right there, dude. Between Hawkeye, Kate, oh, and, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe Elena can teach Kate some better moves or something. <laughs> I mean, she's she, she's nice with it, bro. She's nice. She's with got it. the moves. Wait, who's nice with it? Elena's nice with it. Yeah, she's got the moves, bro. Right, she really does. I mean, Kate Kate kind of went ham in this episode. With a bow, dude. <laughs> I mean, not like I could do it. I mean, I don't think anybody could. I don't even think Hawkeye could shoot. You know, <laughs> traffic lights down on a moving oh, truck. Dude, he could easily, bro. That's, that's, right. that's facts. The man, the man literally, he, I love that scene where he's just shooting people. Oh, yeah. I, I love that scene where he's just shooting people. <laughs> I he, did didn't, he didn't kill any of them, I yeah. don't think. He was just like It, look, it looked like mostly shoulder shots. I'll give you that one. Yeah, he pinned the hand. Yeah. He stuck him in the feet. That was sick, dude. <laughs> he just jumped out of the ball pit. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, I mean, that's that's all I got. I think yeah. I like this episode. I'm excited for the series in general. I hope season Three two. Three more? Yeah. I hope they do a season two, man. I hope they bring Hawkeye back, like Jeremy Renner back. No, I hope so, too. They're kind of setting it up, but also I could see him retiring, you know, with his family at the end. So. Yeah, and I would like that for him. Yeah, same. He's been through a lot. So. But I would also love a season two. Like, if we if we get a cliffhanger with Kingpin, Kingpin's not in any movie, and they bring him back, and Hawkeye gets to him in season oh, two. Oh, yeah, I'd be down for that for sure. That'd be kind of sick. But... Man, man's always coming out of retirement. That's true. He's like Rocky Balboa. Yeah, he is, dude. He comes back when people need him. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm-hmm.